The story begins in California in 1983. Chuck Hull works at a company that makes resilient synthetic coatings for furniture. Chuck was a super creative guy. He had just this passion in understanding both chemistry and process and, and mechanics. In the factory, tabletops are coated with a photopolymer acrylic, which is hardened under ultraviolet light. It's a process that sparks Chuck Hull's million dollar idea. What if, instead of creating one solid layer out of liquid, you create multiple layers that form an object. He looked at these thin layers and he thought to himself, well, if we stack a thousand on top of each other, we can make just about anything. But in order to create a three-dimensional object, Hull needs to experiment with the photopolymer acrylic that makes up these layers. Desperate to develop his idea, Hull approaches his boss. We had a discussion and agreed he would provide a lab, but it would be on my own time. Finally, Hull succeeds in developing a resin strong enough to resist too much warping or a breakage. Now he needs to re-engineer a printer from creating 2D images to a solid 3D object. A leap only made possible when he creates a wireframe computer program. Chuck came up with this idea of the simplest mathematical representation, which was a three-dimensional mesh of a solid object. What's the smallest amount of information that I need that'll do this in a reliable way? And he nailed it. In 1983, Hull builds his first 3D printer. An elevator platform sits in a vat of liquid photopolymer. The computer feeds a wireframe image of the object to be printed in microscopic horizontal layers. An ultraviolet laser traces a cross-section of each layer, solidifying it to the one beneath. Well, after hundreds of layers now, your part's finished, and it pops up, and you have the complete part. March 9th, 1983. Success. The world's first 3D printed object emerges from Hull's machine. So that's when I called my wife, said, you know, come on down to the lab, you have to see this. She complained, she'd already gone in her pajamas, was gonna go to bed. I said, no, no, come on down. Imagine your husband shows you this little weird cup and says, this is gonna change the world. This is creating something out of nothing. It's turning imagination into reality, and that feels like science fiction. But it's in the field of medicine that the 3D printer starts really changing lives. South Sudan, Africa, 2013. A country torn apart by war and littered with bombs and mines. 12-year-old Daniel barely survives an explosion. Daniel lost both of his arms, and he said, if I could have died, I would have eating, bathing, going to the restroom, you know, some of the basic needs are, are completely taken away. American innovator Mick Ebling reads about Daniel's story and travels eight and a half thousand miles to help. Ebling isn't a doctor. He's a tech guru from California. Using a 3D printer he's brought with him, he engineers a unique prosthesis for Daniel. Soon Daniel's feeding himself for the first time in two years. That's huge. That's a life or death situation. That one of the coolest things I've ever witnessed in my life. It was incredible. And Daniel's story might just be the beginning. Bioprinters, capable of printing living tissue, teeth, and bone, are already on the horizon. The ability to print human organs out of living cells, this is really a revolution. Today, the 3D printing business is worth a staggering $3 billion, making 75-year-old inventor Chuck Hull a multimillionaire. And 30 years after he first conceived it, Hull's printer looks set to dominate future science. <laughs>